We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello again. This is Marcus. I'm the chair of the executive committee of the IGFSA. And uh, we just had a chat from one of our executive members who can't find a way into the room. Jennifer, can you send him the link? So this is our annual event. The General Assembly is the highest body of the association. And I checked uh, again our bylaws and we don't need a quorum. Uh, the decisions by the General Assembly are valid regardless of how many people are participating. Uh, Jennifer, can you show the agenda? Thank you. This is the agenda I had sent out uh, end of last month. And uh, but before we adopt the agenda, I would like to honor our member, executive committee member who tragically passed away earlier this year, Makan Fay. Thanks for showing this picture. And I would like us to pay tribute to him by observing a minute of silence. Thank you for joining me in this minute of silence. Thank you. Can we switch back then to the agenda to begin our uh, orderly business? Uh, this is uh, the job we have to do to be in order with our bylaws. Uh, General Assembly is not particularly exciting. The only exciting agenda item, so to speak, is the executive committee election for new members of the executive committee. I would therefore suggest reversing the order and dealing with the executive committee election immediately after adoption of the agenda. And all the other items are uh, required by our bylaws. We have to approve the summary record of last year's General Assembly. We have to adopt the contents of the reports and financial statements and the proof of the annual budget. We have uh, then also a discussion more in depth on fundraising. And lastly, we have to decide on a modification of the Articles of Association that had sent out uh, a recommendation by the Executive Committee in this regard. And finally, we have to release of obligations of the Executive Committee members. That means they're not held legally responsible for anything that happened during the year. It is the membership that assumes the responsibility. And if you have time, we can discuss any other business. With that, can I take it that we approve the agenda, the agenda as proposed by the executive committee? And also with the reversal of the order I have just suggested. Unless I hear no objection, unless I hear any objection, I consider then this agenda as approved. And I see positive signs in the chat. And we had more members joining. I also said greatly honored. I also see Vince Surf. I think you should be made honorary member of the association. I think you have assisted every single uh, general assembly we have held so far. Thanks for doing that. And I see also hands up from Chris. So we have this agenda approved as it stands. With that, we come to agenda item uh, three, that is the elections. And I will hand over to uh, Jameson 
Olufuye, who is our outgoing member and who served as election officer. Please, Jensen. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Marcos. And uh, greetings uh, to every one of us and welcome. Uh, my name uh, again is uh, Jameson Olufuye, uh, Africa ICT Alliance and Contemporary Consulting. Uh, outgoing executive committee member and the election officer for the 2021 election cycle. Uh, please permit me to use this opportunity to just say a few words uh, before I announce the outcome of the election. Uh, since this might be my last official uh, speech, maybe after the uh, presentation of the, uh, the report, financial report. So I would like to thank my colleagues in the executive committee for their cooperation and hard work in delivering on the IGFSA mandate. And uh, many thanks to you, the IGF community, for your interest in stepping forward to put your money where your mouth is by paying your dues uh, regularly and by donating generously to our cause and by standing for election. I have no doubt that we will all continue to press forward with our objectives because we are still far from our goal of an internet governance enhanced prosperity, peace, and security in our world, even though we can be proud that we have made some progress. Again, thank you to those that put their names forward for election. Uh, and now to the outcome of the election. The 2021 IGFSA Executive Committee election was conducted, was concluded uh, at 12 a.m. today. Uh, in accordance with the election format and procedures published on the IGFSA website. Um, the original election started at uh, November 26, uh, 2021 at 12 a.m. UTC, and all ballots were, were unfortunately spoiled prior to completion due to incomplete candidacy list. Uh, we had to do a quick uh, reset. Uh, and started uh, at, uh, again, uh, December 3rd, 2021, at 11.30 p.m. And we finished that, as I said earlier, December 10, 2021, that's today at 12 a.m. I really want to thank you for your cooperation. Well, uh, about 33 ballots were cast and uh, uh, were, were sent out, and 28 were cast out of the 33. And uh, we have the following candidates that put their names forward, as also reflected on our website. Uh, Fiona Asunga, Amrita um, Chaudhry, Marita Hester Husin, uh, Fort John Costa, K. Mohan Raidu, Lawrence Olawale Roberts, Ulus Shegun H. Ulubile. And here are the, the results. Uh, Fiona Asunga uh, scored, uh, got nine votes. That is 17.3%. Amrita Kodri uh, got 10 votes, that's 19.2%. And Arietta Estehusen, 22 votes, got 42.3%. And the Fotcom Costa got three votes, that's 5.8%. And Kemohan Raidu, uh, one vote, that's 1.9%. Uh, Lawrence Olawale Roberts, one vote, 1.9%. And uh, finally, Ulusha Gungulubile got six, got six votes and 11.5%. So with this uh, outcome, uh, we have uh, as elected and the winner, they are Areta Esther Husin, um, Amrita Kudri uh, with 42.3% and 19.2% vote respectfully. Uh, respectively. So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity uh, to conduct this election. I want to also appreciate the secretariat for doing and the technical team for doing a good job. Uh, back to you, uh, Marcos. Thank you, Jameson, very much. Thank you for this diligent uh, uh, overseeing of the election process and congratulations to our new executive committee members, Henriette and Amrita. We're all very pleased to welcome you among ourselves. And I would also take this opportunity to thank the other candidates who showed the interest and who submitted their statements of interest. Uh, I wonder, I think I see both of our new executive committee members are present. 
either online or on site. So uh, I would uh, kindly invite them to say a few words. Uh, Ariette, are you in the room? I suppose so. Um, hi, Marcus. Good morning to Marcus and um, everyone else in IGFSA. And um, this is really an honor. I think not really a deserved honor. Um, I've not been that active in the IGF Support Association, even though I've always supported it. And, and I think we first started thinking of this idea during the working group on IGF improvements. At that time, I was still APC executive director, and I was too busy with that. And then I became MAG chair. But my term as MAG chair is, is uh, over. And so when I was asked to stand for, for this executive committee position, I did it you know, with, with that in mind, that I will have time. And I really believe so much in, in what IGF Support Association um, is doing. And I look forward to, well, helping with fundraising. It's a horrible task, but it's something I've done for most of my career. And I just hope that I can make a contribution. So I, I look forward to working with you all. And thanks for the confidence in me. I think I deserve it less because I haven't been so active as others of you, but I will try and make up for it. Back to you, Marcus. Thank you very much, Harriet. You're most welcome as a new executive committee member, and we all look forward to learn from your wisdom and your experience. And the second new executive member is Amrita. Are you in the room as well, or are you online? I am online, Marcus, and thank you very much for, uh, you know, um, kind of electing me. Um, I am new to this, uh, to IGFSA. I have never been part of it. So I hope to learn from all of you and help in, you know, meeting the objectives which IGFA is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Amrita. I mean, new perspectives are always welcome and sometimes new eyes see things differently and we will forward also to work with you and to learn from you. And I think the election results is also positive results. It it's, uh, enhances our geographical diversity and it definitely improves our gender balance of the executive committee. So I think that is a very welcome result. With that, then I think we can move on to our uh, orderly agenda. And uh, next item is the approval of the summary record of the last uh, General Assembly. The summary record has been posted on the website. I don't know whether you had a time to look at it, but uh, Jennifer, can you maybe walk us through it? It's up on the uh, screen here. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chung, Secretary for the IGFSA. Um, so this has been posted on the IGFSA website and also circulated to the membership when the details of the General Assembly was sent out to the mailing list. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see my screen. Oh, it's still just showing. We yeah, can see it. Ah, OK, it's still just showing the the. Um, the PowerPoint, but let me see if I can drop the link in the chat. I thought I was smart and put it in the link, but no, we can see it. Oh, okay, good. Um, all right, so it's really just a very simple uh, summary record of our General Assembly last year. There is a recording of the live stream as all the IGF sessions are recorded and archived for, um, I guess, record keeping. Um, I don't want to go through the entire thing and take up too much time, but the agenda was set out pretty much the same as um, the agenda we have today. Um, we had it um, in a virtual setting as the IGF was in a virtual setting last year. We had Avri Doria, who was our previous IGFSA executive committee to serve as our elections officer last year. And she presided over the elections last year, which resulted in five uh, new EC members. I'm sorry, four EC, four new EC members and one returning EC member. And they are respectively Miss Joyce Chen, Mr. Brian Cute, Mr. Wisdom Donker, Mr. Christopher Mondini, and our returning EC member is Mr. Nigel Hickson. Um, 
we also went through the adoption of the contents of the report from last year and financial statements, and we approved the annual budget. Um, there was a discussion item on fundraising and crowdfunding. There was the uh, release of obligations of the previous executive committee members and also AOB. So that is just a brief overview of the summary record of the 2021 General Assembly of IGFSA. Back to you, Marcus. Thank you, Jennifer, um, for producing also the summary record and for introducing it. Uh, are there any comments? If not, can I take it that we are all in accordance and we approve the uh, summary record of last year's General Assembly? I see positive signs from the US. Vince Serfs signed that he approves. So no objection, no comments, though then it is approved unanimously as is in previous years. And can we go then to the next agenda item? That's the annual report. And again, over to you, Jennifer, to walk us through it. Thank you, Marcus. With this one, I think I should actually share the actual document and walk us through a little more in, in little more detail. So let me unshare this and reshare. Okay, here you go. And Kelvin, if you can just drop that uh, URL into the chat room for uh, our Zoom and participants as well, that would be great. Thank you. So here is the annual report of um, the IGFSA activities that was carried out between the last General Assembly and today. Um, it covers, of course, um, as I just mentioned that, um, we have the structures of the association, which uh, remains pretty much unchanged. Um, as mentioned before, it was uh, the previous General Assembly was carried out on the 2nd of November 2020, and it was done in a virtual setting. We had over 60 IGFSA members and observers who attended uh, solely via remote participation. And this year we have both in person here in Katowice and uh, online on Zoom. I mentioned previously also in the summary record, we had the four candidates who were elected to the IGFSA Executive Committee. I will not repeat their names here again. And we had a returning EC member uh, who came back to serve with us on the EC. And here you can see the full slate of the 2020 to 2021 IGFSA Executive Committee. And I will go on. Um, we had a very prolific year this year. The executive committee had 19 meetings over the course of this year. And this does not include the committee meetings uh, that dealt with fundraising, which was a small group. And there was also another small group who dealt with communications and strategy. Um, the executive committee is supported by a secretary and a secretariat. And we have uh, retained an IGFSA accountant, Michael Parrott, to assist us with all the accounting and banking issues. For the membership, uh, we have two categories of membership. Um, in 2021, we have received five new members and one new organizational member, bringing the total to 256 registered members. The executive committee admitted the following new individual members. Um, you can see the list here, Amrita Chowdhury, Anries Estehoisen, K. Mohan Raidu, Olusegun Oluplie, Lydia Best. And then we also admitted the following new organizational member, which is the European Internet Forum. We have a um, a more in-depth uh, agenda item on fundraising, but the figures here are for 2021, we received a total of 114,473 US dollars and 18 cents in contributions. 
Um, this was done, uh, this, this figure was computed um, as of 14th of October this year. And while membership fees are not the primary source of funding to fulfill our mission, we also received in part of this total uh, $1,973.18 uh, um, as membership dues and individual donations. Here you can see a breakdown of all the contributions received as of the 15th of November of this year. We received $30,000 from Google earmarked for accessibility, uh, 30,000 from ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. We have received 50,000 uh, US dollars from the Number Resources Organization. Um, we've also received um, 2,500 US dollars from the ICANN business constituency. And as previously mentioned, we also received a sum from our individual um, membership fees. So that brings us to the total you can see on screen here. As before, um, the budget and allocations of funds is decided at the General Assembly and by the membership. And we have prioritized this in a flexible manner, uh, especially giving seed funding to NRIs in the developing world. We seek a high priority to strengthen and promote exchange and collaboration with the NRI network. So as part of this priority this year, IGFSA has contributed a total of 20,000 US dollars to the NRI. Um, 3,000 were allocated to the two regional and sub-regional IGFs, $15,000 to the nine separate uh, national initiatives. 2,000 US dollars were awarded to the youth initiatives, um, bringing up the total contributions to the NRIs uh, to date to uh, 499,000 US dollars. And this is the current funding situation as of 15 November of this year. Um, this is the projected funds allocation for 2022. Um, as previous years, we have done the 10,000 US dollars to the UN IGF Trust Fund. We anticipate also having uh, 60,000 US dollars for the national and regional IGFs. The 30,000 is still allocated for the accessibility fund. And then there's the projected administrative expenses, which include the fees from the secretariat, the accountant fees, and also our bank fees, as you can see there on your screen. So as I mentioned before, uh, this year as well, we have made a contribution of 10,000 US dollars to the UN IGF Trust Fund, which brings up the total of our contributions to date to 300,000 US dollars. And here there's a breakdown uh, in detail of which of the uh, national and regional initiatives and youth initiatives that we have um, approved funding for. Um, we have approved funding for the Central Asia IGF, Eurodig. Armenia IGF, Chad IGF, Lebanon IGF, Guatemala IGF, Ghana IGF, uh, Kenya IGF, IGF Cameroon, Uganda IGF. And here we also have um, a NRI that is having its pilot meeting this year, Comoros IGF, and two youth initiatives, Youth uh, IGF Argentina and also Youth IGF Ukraine. So at the top of the page here that you see this, the four national IGFs were approved for a higher sum than the others because they also contain a youth component in their program. And the IGFSAEC felt that it is good to encourage these developments, especially in the regional, uh, I'm sorry, the national IGFs that don't already have this uh, component. So the accessibility fund, um, the contribution from Google was earmarked for en enhancing the accessibility of the IGF, and this fund is set up for this purpose. The contribution of ten thousand um, and four hundred forty U.S. dollars and ninety cents was uh, used for providing real-time transcription in the intersessional calls 
of the IGF's multi-stakeholder advisory group and also the dynamic coalitions. So I'm actually almost at the end of this report. I think you're probably quite uh, bored of listening to my voice. This year, um, we did something uh, special, I think, because of all the uh, different meetings that we've had. We established a small group within the EC to look at value propositions for donors, various targeted efforts and messages and presentations were made to different stakeholder groups and constituency groups to broaden the donor base. And you can already see, as I've mentioned previously, we've also received a donation from the ICANN business constituency as part of this effort. You'll hear more from the EC members who are uh, headlining this particular effort in a little bit. And um, we also, uh, the EC and the Secretariat used uh, a lot of the virtual NRI meetings that were held this year to promote the association, raise awareness, and recruit new members. And finally, we kind of piloted a new quarterly IGFSA newsletter, which we launched uh, in June of this year to inform members about developments in the internet governance sphere. And we also showcased um, some small and short video interviews from the IGFSA community to uh, showcase donors, to showcase the national regional initiatives that have received support from us, and also to kind of showcase our new IGFSA EC members to introduce them to the community if they are not already known. And I think we will probably start our new quarterly newsletter with introducing our two new EC members. So this is uh, my uh, overview of the report. Uh, back to you, Marcus. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for this comprehensive overview. Are there any questions? Yes, there's a hand up. Abdel Jali Baha, please. So, hi everyone. So, my name is Abdi Jalil Basharbong. So, I'm the former member of IGFAC. So, I will come back again here. So, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I was uh, uh, the annual report. So, I think that uh, congratulations for that. So, you do uh, a good uh, job. So, congratulations to our the members and our the secretariat. It's so hard because it's COVID, uh, writing the report, coordinating people, coordinating NRI is not so easy. So my suggestion is that uh, uh, as we now, we have uh, some emerging school of internal governance. So how EGF, EGF, IGF, SAA can support this kind of uh, school of internal governance. And other side also about capacity building, because we cannot only wait in to organize our annual meeting, but there are some requests locally about doing some capacity building. So in this case, how AGFSA can uh, can be flexible on that. So thank you so much. I'm representing uh, IGF chat, and thank you for your support on this uh, year and all your support. Without your support, we cannot do the event. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. And I think your point is well taken. And my suggestion would be to put it on the agenda of our next meeting or the first meeting of the executive committee, the newly constituted. And the summer school so far, we have not supported on internet governance, but there's certainly something worth considering. And one of our new members, I know Ariette is heavily involved in the African uh, summer school scene. So this, I mean, the question is always the availability of resources. And uh, unfortunately, and we can get back to that on the fundraising, we could do with having more resources at our disposal. But I think uh, we listened to you and uh, your proposal is well received. And also, I think we noted with thanks that uh, our contribution helped you with the your own national IGF. Are there other comments, questions? If not, can we then approve the report as presented and go to the next agenda item? Uh, thank you, thank you, Marcus. Uh, I think we come from a long way. Uh, I, my name is Naza Nicholas from uh, Tanzania IGF. 
And uh, I am not a member or anything. I've just sneaked in to, to listen to your, uh, to your annual general meeting. But I would like to appreciate uh, your support on behalf of uh, Tanzania IGF. And also, I would like to second the, uh, the idea of, that was brought by the Chad uh, Bacha, that uh, if we would consider supporting also the School of uh, Internet Governance. Why? It is because uh, the, the School of Internet Governance is where we are trying to groom uh, young people into participation of the process, in the process of the uh, IGF, a regional, global, and uh, the national. So, so, so to us, the, um, the, the schools are actually the, the breeding ground for the young people, women and uh, girls and boys, to be able to learn uh, the multi-stakeholder processes, the infrastructure stuff and all that. So uh, when they come to IGF, they have something concrete to be able uh, to contribute. Last is the, uh, I would like to, on, the, uh, on the issue of uh, fundraising. Uh, I would like you to, to be able to expand uh, your- may, may I interrupt you with your indulgence? We have fundraising as a separate agenda item, then you can come back to it and you're most welcome to join the discussion. But right, right now, I think that we can just do our regular business and adopt the summary record. And I see the uh, room is actually filling up. How many people are in the room there? It's, unfortunately, it's a bit frustrating we don't really see so much who's in the room. That's, oh, thank you for giving us a better picture, yes. That's the yeah. first Hi, that, let me, yeah, let me that's, introduce I've, myself. I think no, I recognized you, yes, you're most yeah, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to bring up something and, and perhaps it's a, an item for a future. I noticed how few people voted compared to the number of members we have. Now, when I was one of you, I never did anything about it and I never worried about it. I'm wondering, is the percentage decreasing? Is it something that perhaps we should include in, in future reports and perhaps even something we should do something about? Thanks. Uh, thank you. I think your concern was also mine. I was also negatively surprised when I saw the numbers, but I think it's the online process does not make it easier. When we had physical meetings, there were a lot of people who came at the last minute and paid their membership fees and wanted to vote, whereas here they had to vote, had to pay the membership dues beforehand in order to be eligible. And again, thank you to the Secretariat to uh, running the process so smoothly, but I think it also is a bit of a deterrent for people to participate, but it's definitely a point uh, to look into, a point is well taken. We have not that many members who can be considered to be members in good standing, that is members who have actually paid their membership dues, but this I think is happens to many, many associations. It's very difficult to mobilize people and in the online setting even more so. But uh, anyway, great to see you, Avri. And with that, can we adopt the report as presented? And I see Wint suggests that we should, and I can't hear any objection. So I take it that the report is adopted as presented. And we also, <clears throat> need to approve the financial statements. A lot of that was included already in the, uh, in the report, but I hand over to our treasurer, his last duty as outgoing executive committee member. Jimson, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, uh, Marcos. Uh, maybe I will just uh, share my screen uh, now. So they could follow with me. Okay.
Okay, here, uh, here we are. And uh, let me use the opportunity again uh, to appreciate uh, the ESCOM for putting me to be your treasurer while on the executive committee. And um, it's a pleasure to have served. And uh, as I bow out, I present my last uh, report. Uh, much of this has been captured in uh, uh, Jennifer's uh, presentation. Uh, but this is how it is as at 15 11, 2021. Um, this report is being presented uh, following Article 16 of uh, our charter, uh, Charter of the Association, indicating that we derive our resources from membership dues, contribution provided by membership, public and private donations, grants, fees, and other payments in-kind contributions and uh, support and uh, own uh, assets. So um, we have three accounts, the USD account, the Swiss uh, franc uh, account, and the Euro uh, account. So this is the opening balance as at uh, uh, 9, 10, 20, 20, uh, with respect to the last uh, AGM uh, reporting. So from that time to this moment, that is uh, 1511, this is uh, what uh, we have exactly. And these are the details in the uh, three accounts. As mentioned, accessibility fund, yeah, we is drawn down to 18, 450.75 USD. And uh, in the US account is 71,708.22 uh, uh, dollars. Swiss uh, franc account, 1,336.91, and Euro account, 1,538.28. Yes, uh, total expense, expenses, 63, 221.64, and um, indeed updated uh, NIR disbursement, 26,000 USD, the UN trust fund contribution, 10,000. This was for between uh, the last reporting and now, and that 1511. After 1511, we have already disbursed another one, which will be reported at the next AGM. So for accessibility captioning, uh, this is uh, as reported, accountant's fee with 4,211.57 cents, and uh, total bank charges, 569.18, secretariat fees, uh, 12,000 uh, USD. And then total income is uh, 114, uh, $114,473.18. Uh, we appreciate Google funding for accessibility, 30,000. Uh, the numbers resource organization, uh, NRO, very consistent, 50,000. The internet corporation for assigned names and number, 30,000. And uh, our new, uh, Contributor donor, I can business constituency 2,500, and membership dues 1,973.18. And I'll use opportunity to comment that uh, plus one to uh, the comment earlier you know, by, by uh, Avery that we need to boost our membership base. It's a job for all of us. So, income over expenditure, uh, that is what we have uh, left. Uh, at, uh, this period is 51,271.54 USD. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Marcus. Thank you, Jimson. And we also have an audit uh, committee that is uh, Brian Cute and uh, Christopher Mondini. Uh, can I give the floor to either one of you? Uh, hi, this is uh, Chris Mondini. I hope you can hear me all right. It's a pleasure to be you. Pleasure to be with you. Um, uh, for the point of view of uh, our audit committee, it's a rather a uh, straightforward task of reviewing the financial statement and reviewing the documentation of the bank accounts and assuring uh, alignment. And so in that case, I'm pleased to say that we've taken a look and assured alignment and uh, uh, we don't have a formal report at this stage, but it is something that we've added and will uh, include in future reporting. Thank you, Chris. And with that, then I take it we can 
approve the financial statements for the year. At least that's, I see a positive sign of approval from Wint and uh, no objections. So that has been approved. And the next agenda item is approval of the annual budget based upon a recommendation by the executive committee, but that has already been included in the uh, report presented by Jennifer, so I don't think we need to have a separate approval on that. Uh, with your indulgence, as we are short of time, and I notice that they are very strict with kicking you out of a room here, I would suggest a slight change in the agenda and going through our statutory business first because we discuss fundraising. Uh, we have to decide on a modification of the Articles of Association based upon a recommendation by the Executive Committee. This is really a minor thing, but the only <clears throat> way we can change our bylaws is by the membership at the General Assembly. You may or may not recall I sent out in my invitation email that we had we should have done that earlier, but uh, it was a legacy issue when we were set up. The Internet Society assumed the role of secretariat, and that was reflected in our bylaws. And it is, you can see it here uh, as, it is, as it was. The top half, it mentioned explicitly the Internet Society as a secretary for the association. And we discussed it and we thought as an executive committee, we don't need to go into that level of detail in the bylaws. And now we benefit from the services of DotAsia, but should DotAsia decide they would not like to continue, then we can change and get services from somebody else without changing the bylaws. We hope, of course, that Dot Asia will maintain services and not mentioning them in the bylaws is by no means a slight to them. We greatly appreciate the excellent services provided, but we just thought it was necessary or not necessary to be so granular in the bylaws. And we thought to have a more streamlined bylaws would make be A, more elegant and B, more practical. So you had as seen already some signs of approval and I take it then uh, until there is an objection but I don't think there is an objection there's approvals everywhere so this change has been approved thank you for that and we will change it on the website uh, so uh, this is uh, then also public and the last statutory uh, agenda item is release of obligations of the executive committee members and that is again uh, it's under swiss law a requirement of uh, each association at its uh, general assembly needs to uh, release of obligations in swiss uh, english they call them discharge in french uh, we had it in the first uh, years called it discharge, but I think that really created more confusion than anything else. And I was told that the correct English expression would be release of obligations. But that means that the membership agrees that we have fulfilled our obligations and you are approving of this. And I hope you can again release of us our obligations. And I see also there is a special slide up, a special thanks to Jimson for his services as member and in the last years as treasurers of the association. Do we have agreement on this? And a special mention to Jimson in the report. Yes, I can see two thumbs up from Wint and approving from others. Thank you for that. And then we can go back to the fundraising agenda item which maybe needs some more time and then we can have also a discussion take the remaining time to discuss this item and uh, the two executive committee members who were particularly 
active on this issue were Brian Cute and Chris Mondini. And who would like to introduce uh, the agenda item? Uh, thank you very much, Marcus. I'll start. I'm delighted that Brian is here with us also. And I must start, as I have in other sessions, by thanking all of the organizers there at the, in Katowice um, and everyone that's put on this amazing IGF, including scribes, interpreters, and all of the, all of the team that worked so hard to make it happen. Uh, on fundraising, I do want to echo what others have said. Uh, membership dues are very important because it, in, it indicates not just a financial obligation, but time and attention and involvement. And as an executive committee member, I will encourage my colleagues to take up this issue of active involvement and expanding not just uh, membership, but the activities of the membership, for example, in elections. Um, as you've seen, uh, my employer, ICANN, is very proud to be a supporter. I know we're joined in that by the numbers community who are here with us today. Um, and we're very appreciative of the private sector contributions of the business constituency of ICANN and of Google. And um, if you look over the years, you will have seen that the IGFSA has had a, 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 an incredible roster of donors that have come and go in recent times. And with Brian's help, uh, the executive committee and I have really worked to um, prepare a plan to reinvigorate that process. So uh, we've spent a lot of 2021 focusing on what is the value proposition. We here, I believe, agree on the value proposition of the IGF uh, and know well that it is the, the key global multi-stakeholder platform to evolve and raise awareness around the resource that is the internet. Um, the value proposition of the IGFSA is that we can take the IGF movement and really make it uh, spread it geographically. And you've seen that the vast majority of our resources go to support national and regional IGFs. Uh, and um, I would also add to that, the value is in serving as a clearinghouse and repository of good practice, good ideas, uh, advice for success, uh, a light touch suggestions on agenda, on content. Um, and so all of us in the executive committee have uh, varying degrees of experience in organizing events such as this and working in this field. And I think in addition to financial resources, we really take pride in um, supporting volunteers that work so hard on these events. So those are really the value propositions that we communicate outward. But really, under Brian's leadership, we've gone on a listening tour to listen to donors, uh, current and past and potential future donors, to hear what they want to get out of an IGF uh, essay and what value they would expect uh, for their contribution. And of course, many of our donors and contributors are in the private sector, but arguably, for every stakeholder category, they want the same thing. They want a demonstrated variety of uh, attendees from diverse stakeholder groups. They want to see that themes that are important to them or their organization are uh, featured on the agenda. They do also, in fact, I would say, uh, want to see that there's attendance from uh, decision makers, influencers from every sector, uh, in, in the various geographies where there is support being uh, provided. And for example, uh, I will give you a concrete example, uh, feedback that we received from uh, domain name registries approaching some of those companies. They, they said to us, can you help us to encourage that uh, basic uh, capacity building and training about how the domain name system works is a component of various IGFs that you would be supporting. And this is the kind of um, example of where the listening comes to us and we can make that suggestion to uh, the NRIs that uh, we're supporting across the community. Um, I will say also, we do have an indirect uh, value in these communications because some companies and other donors we talk to say, oh, we, we will 
will be working globally to support these IGFs directly. Um, but for those that have less resource or less time and would like to uh, uh, take advantage of our our help in gathering information and uh, promoting uh, good practice, um, the IGFSA stands ready to help them. So we have begun with the NRIs to ask about things like attendees. Uh, already we get very good out after IGF reporting uh, from these events, but who has attended, what have been the key themes, and if there's content that we can uh, help you to locate or source, or there are themes that uh, we think that uh, donors would be interested to see covered, or that you and your local uh, national or regional internet community feel are very important that should be brought to their attention. Again, we want to be part of this two-way clearinghouse of information. So that long list of companies we've listened to who've supported us in the past, we'll be reaching out to over the course of 2022. If you uh, an organization you know, an employer, a company, others that might want to support us. If you have an idea, do share it with us at the info at igfsa.org uh, website. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome our new executive committee members. And I assure you all of our committee members will be involved in this effort as in the year to come. Thanks. Thank you for that. And I see two hands up, two of our existing donors. First, uh, Vint Cerf and then Chris Buckridge. Vint, you have the floor. So let me make uh, two commitments. Uh, I will uh, assure uh, $100,000 in 2022 to go to the IGFSA uh, operation. It will be an unrestricted grant coming from the Tides Foundation uh, by way of Google. And second, uh, I will make a similar commitment to the IGF Secretariat. Uh, in a similar amount. This is excellent news. Thank you very much. Applause. Thank you. Chris? I don't know how to follow that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to follow. <laughs> yeah. No, well, what I was going to say was just um, thank you to Chris and Brian, and also to you, Marcus, and other EC um, members, because I think particularly the question around the value proposition of the IGFSA why IGFSA should be the, the mechanism through which people donate um, is something that I've raised in the past and I'm really grateful to see it being addressed in such a specific way and to hear some of the um, thoughts that um, Chris had in, in his summary there. I think that's, that's really moving in the right direction. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's really valuable and thank you for that and I'll look forward to um, helping to get that word out and to, to um, hopefully even more greatly diversify the number and range of donors. Thank you, Chris. And I think there was a hand in, um, in the room. And I think I would like first to ask uh, Nazar, who I so rudely interrupted, whether he would like now to uh, share his thoughts he had on fundraising with us. Okay, thank you, Marcus. And uh, I was going to run to another NRI session. Uh, that's <laughs> why I'm, I was jittery about you know, contributing. Uh, basically, what I was uh, suggesting is also in terms of fundraising, um, we have uh, all these uh, uh, global uh, telecoms. Uh, for example, um, the, uh, the uh, companies like uh, Safaricom, MTN, and um, and uh, Vodacom, they do have uh, funding that is basically, uh, uh, they call it uh, uh, corporate social responsibility of, of some sort. And because the board, is, uh, the, the, the board of directors of these companies are basically uh, global people, they, they, they come from all over the world. And what I would suggest to the fundraising committee is that uh, they, they can approach these uh, organizations, these uh, telecom organizations, and with the, the idea of forming a strategic partnerships, because what IGFSA is doing is actually fund the very uh, local um, uh, organizations and, uh, and, uh, and trucks for the IGF that are actually doing uh, work locally, like, uh, for example, IGF Tanzania. 
So uh, my suggestion is that uh, uh, to reach out to them and form uh, strategic uh, partnerships with these guys because they are all global and even the owners of these companies are not local uh, individuals such, but a, percentage, a big percentage of them uh, come from, the, uh, from different countries uh, you know, around the world. So that will be my, uh, my suggestion for uh, fundraising. Thank you. Thank you for that. Was there another floor request in the room, Jennifer? That was the hand I saw. I don't believe there are any other hands uh, in the room. Then I saw that uh, Nigel also asked for the floor. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Good morning, good afternoon to, uh, to everyone. Um, I also put my hand down, but well, as you asked me, I, I'd just like to uh, sincerely thank uh, Chris and Brian for putting together the report. Also, thanks to Vint, what a uh, marvellous that people come along to a, a General Assembly and, uh, and support us in, uh, in, in this way. The, the, the only point I was going to make was that uh, we, we probably need, and this is really a, a committee issue, I suppose, but we need, we also, I think, can leverage the wonderful uh, NRI network that we support, and it's great to see some of the uh, NRIs uh, here, here today to you know, to, to spread the word about what the IGFSA does, of course, and and also to, you know, leverage any support there might be in the in the regions. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other comment on this agenda from fundraising, which clearly we discussed that before, but I just wonder whether we should maybe have a dedicated session with our members. We mentioned this at one of our previous general assemblies but we never actually followed up on that and it was mainly due to the pandemic but we could easily organize a call where we invite all our members on brainstorming on how best to approach it and also one issue we, as Ariette mentioned in her open, her remarks uh, the idea goes back a long time and the starting point for the IGFSA was actually crowdfunding, but we were never good at activating crowdfunding. And uh, maybe also with new members of the executive committee, we have new ideas and new energy, but uh, the idea, I can't remember whether it was in Berlin or whether it was the year before in Paris, that we said we should actually involve the members more in our fundraising activities and uh, so this is just an idea that we can maybe pursue when we have our first executive committee meeting in the new year but uh, i think we're running out of time and i'm i'm happy to move on but uh, they may kick us out of the room so <laughs> uh, we also have any other business on the agenda is there anything else anyone would like to contribute on fundraising or any other business and I also turn to our new executive committee members Amrita and uh, Ariette anything you would like to add at this stage it's been uh, yes please a question uh, the uh, the IGF um, as uh, how do I say this a proposal has been made uh, and apparently is being executed to introduce a new layer of oversight for the IGF in the form of a high level panel. Does the IGF SA have an opinion about this? Uh, we have never discussed uh, this and so far actually interpreted our bylaws rather restrictively as it was just to support the IGF and we never had uh, in any case sort of a policy discussions on which way we should go. But I don't know whether any of our uh, executive committee members would like to chime in on this. Um, Marcus Enriet here. Um, I wasn't actually going to chime in on that. I was going to say, I think it's a really good idea to have a dedicated meeting on fundraising and to look at the crowdfunding uh, issue again, but uh, it is a relevant issue that Vint um, uh, 
raised. And and I think, I mean, I maybe there's space here for us to explore more interaction between the IGF SA and uh, these IGF um, structures. I think at the moment, I'm, not, I'm saying this also in my capacity as outgoing MAG chair, it's very much a wait and see. I think we're still very unclear about exactly how this leadership panel will operate. There is a terms of reference. It's not very detailed. Um, um, I do think it is good for us to, to stay aware of that. And but I, I still need to learn, in fact, more about how IGFSA does see itself in relation to, to these external processes, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Thank you for that. And uh, I, I, as I would say, nothing prevents us from doing it. Our bylaws, I think, are flexible enough to allow us to take a position on these broader issues, structural issues, uh, but so far we have not done so, but this is uh, something we can definitely uh, discuss. With that, I think we reached the allotted end of our time. I'm not sure how flexible uh, the room management is. Jennifer, do you have an idea? Do we have to there, There's already a note in the chat saying, get the hell out of the room. So <laughs> okay. I should have seen that. Okay. Thank you for putting it in very clear terms. Okay. Let's get the hell out of the room. With that, I thank you all for your participation. In particular, I welcome the new executive committee member, and I would like to once again extend our special thanks to Vince Cerf for his promised generous contribution to IGFSA. With that, the General Assembly 21 is closed. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care.